being here today. It's a season to, uh, as always, to remember the Lord's coming to this earth. It's the greatest story. It still holds uh, a sense of honest, a sense of uh, absolute miraculous to think about beyond us. Hard to comprehend our God coming to this earth, becoming flesh, living among us. We dealt last week a little bit about just that that very thing that he came down into our world. He walked among uh, this earth. He was tempted in all things. He understands pain. He understands all the stuff that you and I go through every day. Every, every bit of it. There's nothing that he does not understand. And so I thought I would take us to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1 this morning, and just take some time to talk a little bit about the story of the forerunner of Jesus. And how many know who that is? John the Baptist. And he is a forerunner prior coming to Jesus Christ. God was moving at such a time as it was. Uh, our story begins at verse 5 in chapter 1 of Luke. We'll call this in his time. In the days of Herod, king of Judah, there was a certain priest named Zacharias. I love that name. Say that with me. Zacharias. Of the divisions of Abijah. And had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous in the sight of God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and requirements of the Lord. And they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and there was, they were both advanced in years. Now it came about while he was performing his priestly service before God in the appointed order of his divisions, according to the custom of the priestly office, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of people were in prayer outside the house, hour of the incense of offering. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing to the right of, of the altar of incense. And Zacharias was troubled when he saw him, and fear gripped him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your petition has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you will give him the name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at that birth. What a story. What an amazing event that occurred in a, in a man that was called by God to, as a priest to go in, and it was his, by lot, was chosen to go in and offer incense. It was an important job. It was so important, in fact, that you were not sure if you were going to come out alive. Literally. And so they would actually tie ropes to the priests and bells around their feet so they could tell if they were still alive in there. And uh, it was a holy, the holiness of God. If we did not approach the Lord in a, word, in, in a righteous manner, uh, he could take care of us in a moment. But aren't you glad for his grace today? We cannot approach God except for Jesus Christ. We can approach God because Jesus Christ came and died on behalf of our sin. The angel announced, I like to say, number one, God showed up. You've been going about your earthly business. You're going about your routines of your day. You're going about your work, your customs, your whatever your habits. And all of a sudden, the Lord appears. Your whole day will be changed, transformed. Your whole day will take on a whole different outlook. Amen? When God shows up in your situation, how many need God to show up in your situation today? God, need to sh God, will you show up in our earth? God, will you show up in our home? God, will you show up when I go to the workplace? When I don't understand this school stuff? God, will you show up in my mind? Amen? And so Zacharias is like, whoa! He wasn't expecting what he was going to receive that day. 
I mean, sometimes God answered your prayer. You said, oh, you're a little bit surprised. Come on. Why should we be surprised? Come on. God is with us. God came to dwell in our hearts. God, wants to have, God has a message so often. God has a message for you. It may be just one word. It may be just trust. It may be just seek me. It may be just simple be at peace. Be still. Look to me. Zacharias was troubled, verse 12, when he saw him and fear gripped him. We cannot stand in the presence of God without being affected. We cannot be in the presence of God and, and, and really be in the presence of God and not be changed. Something happened. And that very moment, he began to be afraid. He began to think, oh my, what is he going to say to me? And then he begins to say these words. Your wife's going to bear a son. What? You're going to have a son. I wonder what he was thinking. You who? Oh, great. I could use some help around here. But it was beyond that. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. What are we talking about? Who are we talking about here? We're talking about John the Baptist. He's a forerunner to Jesus. He will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will not drink wine or liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Interesting comparison. Wine and liquor is only, that's, the Bible says don't be drunk with it. Don't get drunk with wine. The book of Acts, they were accused, the people that gathered in the upper room were accused of being drunk. Interesting comparison because something's, something that we can latch on to. The spirit of God is greater than the spirit of or whatever liquor does to us. The Spirit of God is far greater and longer lasting and healthy. And the soul of us, our soul is fed. Our soul, man, our soul that is empty and thirsty and barren as Elizabeth was barren. Our soul can be barren. Our soul can be empty except Jesus yet to come. Now, John the Baptist, he was kind of my kind of guy. He lived in the wilderness. Right? He ate locusts. I don't know about those things. And he ate honey. I could take the honey. I'm not so sure about the locusts. He wore this outfit, just a, whatever it was, a camel skin or whatever it was. And he, and he began to cry out, a voice in the wilderness. He gave voice to not himself. He gave voice to not about him, but about who was coming after. Why were the disciples, why were so many confused? Well, it says something about Elijah had to come first before Jesus would come. If Elijah, there, were, there was this misunderstanding, and the scripture explains, and Jesus explained it like this. John the Baptist had the spirit of Elijah. What did Elijah do? He was a prophet, a mighty used of God. Yet at the same time, he had, he had depression. 
He had weaknesses. He had fears, just like anyone else. He experienced life just like you and I do. Sometimes we get discouraged and down over the littlest things and the simplest things and bothered by so many things. And that's then where we need God to show up. And we need to go to God. And we need to allow him to pour into our hearts. How do we get to God? We get to God by reading the word of God first and foremost. That's one of the... That's one of the greatest ways to get to God, to understand. And then begin to use his word as you pray his word, as you pray the word in your life, over your home, over your kids, on and on it goes. While doing your work, by washing the dishes, by going to the job, you take the Lord, the help of the Holy Spirit goes with you to give you direction. I believe God can help us live longer. Come on. I believe God can bless. Hey, I got to put this in there. Children, obey your parents. Right? In Ephesians, for it is pleasing to God. Right? Hey, there's a promise. Don't forget this. If you want to live long in the life on the earth. Yeah. Children, obey your parents. What does that mean? Respect them. Honor them. Do what they tell you to do with a good attitude. Do I have to? Do I have to? Oh, you know? But what, what would life be like if we would just do it? Somebody put a t-shirt together or something a saying, just do it. Just believe. Just Call on the Lord. Just enter in. Every situation is oftentimes like a, a lot of situations just like Elizabeth and Zacharias today. There are a lot of situations that are even worse. There are a lot of situations where the health is just, oh my goodness, we, we, we lost, so, we, we don't know what we're going to do. And God shows up. It's similar to Abraham and Sarah, isn't it? Another story in the Old Testament, Abraham was promised by God that he would have a son, yet he's, he's old. I mean, he's past, and his, his wife is, you know, we don't want to mention how old she was. We all know she was pushing 100, 90. What a situation that are absolutely impossible. Hannah was another one who brought her petition before the Lord when she came to the temple. She was also accused of being drunk, just like the upper room people. Because she was whispering, she was talking with her lips were moving, and the priest is looking at her. Hmm. Are you drunk? You know, this, this, the world thinks we're crazy. Sometimes we're misunderstood. Oh, you're, you're one of them. Let's not get too radical. Well, why not? Bless God. What about the world that goes to a sports stadium and they just carry on? Why can't we get excited about the things that God's talking about? Come on, Stephanie. I know you love the Lord. It's a good thing. God helps us with everything in our life, every detail. Every situation is he wants to be involved. He wants to show up in your mindset today. God hears your prayer if you're sincere. If you're sincere. Sometimes he, he knows when we're really sincere and when we're really not. You never can fool God, can you? But I'll tell you what. Why is it that we pray a lot harder when we're really desperate? And there's no, is it impossible? I can't figure it out. But God showed up. And God spoke to you. By the way, God's still speaking today. Don't, don't buy into anything that he isn't. I, it's all over the Bible. God, the Holy Spirit, has left, came so that he might show us who Jesus is. 
conviction and brings us into the truth. The truth. Truth is what sets us free. Truth is that which gives us foundation to build on. When the world is waffling and all over the place and unsure and everything goes, it's not the way it is in God's kingdom. He has standards. He has boundaries. He has a way in which we ought to walk. His greatest yearning and desires that he might know you. And you might know him. He already knows you. Back that up. His desire is that you might want him. Might I want him? May I want him more than anything else? And so why should I get anxious? Because I take my eyes off Jesus. When I take my eyes off Jesus, I begin to sing. So the prayer that Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but with prayer and everything, supplications, you let your requests be made known to God. Now the promise comes, the next verse, the peace of God, which surpasses what? Our comprehension or understanding and guards our hearts. That's a key. Set a guard over my heart, the psalmist said. Set a guard. That no foothold or thought that would not please God, would get a hold of us. Set a guard. Station. It's your standard. We move on. Second point, God gave a sign. This is kind of a hard one. In some ways, I feel God was somewhat, okay, now, Zacharias, because you're unbelief, you're not going to talk. You can't talk until your son's... Let's read the story. Verse 18, Luke 1. Zacharias said to the angel, How shall I know this for certain? Isn't that just the way we are? But well, how am I going to really know? Listen, if God said it's going to happen, we should say, okay, it's going to happen. But how am I going to really know? All right, Zacharias, this is how you're going to know. The angel of the Lord, verse 19, says, I am Gabriel, and stands in the presence of God. I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you shall be silent and unable to speak. Oh, boy. Could he have done another sign? You know, there's this, this couldn't have been a discussion. No, well, he couldn't talk, but he, he could talk in his mind. But, you know, wasn't there other, any other way? What's going on here? Sometimes God is saying, you just be silent. Be quiet. I am who I am. God comes down to us. The natural things don't really matter so much. The things that we work hard for, we need, at least we think we need. The problem is sometimes when we pray, we pray with only things we want rather than we need. Nah, I'm not going to get into it. You figure that out. What is the most important thing? Well, that I might know who God is, number one. That I might love him. That my heart may not be deceived that I might trust him and obey him because I want to. Because the laws that he's given to us, all of a sudden, it makes sense. Oh, Jeremiah goes, I will write the laws on their heart. The problem with religiousness is... We can think we're okay as long as we're doing the, doing the, do, the duty, doing the things that, well, no. Right? Jesus always brings it down to the heart. Oh, my goodness. Illustration, I, Abraham and Isaac is another great story, great faith story. 
a great test of the faith. Now Abraham, after Isaac is born, now God asked him to do something really hard. And so Abraham said, saddle up the donkeys. We're going up to the mountain to worship. He doesn't tell Isaac what's going on, smart man. At the same time, I don't sure, I'm not sure Abraham knew exactly what was going on yet. You know, he gets all this stuff prepared, and Isaac is, has a question. Isaac says to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, It's like, Dad, you got to get. How many of dads you got to get their attention before it's even worse talking? Come on, come on. You know, you've had dads. It works with your kids, too. If you're going to talk to your kids, you got to get their attention first. Just like God got Moses' attention in the, in the wilderness by the burning bush. Another story. Then... He says, here I am, my son. He said, behold, the fire, the wood. Where's the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, God will provide himself the lamb for the burnt offering. Fascinating story because Abraham was following through with this. By now, Isaac, he's, 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 he's bound. He's, he's on the altar. And Abraham has got to be looking up to God, thinking, I don't understand, but I'm going to trust you. And it was then God said, enough, enough. Don't. And God, God is testing Abraham's faith. And sure enough, it's just like God. There's a ram caught in the thickets. There's the shadow. There's the foreshadow of who Jesus is coming. Isaac, also a type of Christ, having the wood on his shoulder or back, carrying up the mountain. Jesus carrying the cross. Jesus becoming the sacrifice. So God is speaking to you, has been speaking to us for years and years and years. Thousands of years to mankind. He's still speaking. He's still whispering. By the help of the Holy Spirit, may we be, have ears to hear. May we have a sense of what we're doing is, is in the heart of God. Is, in, is it ordained or orchestrated by God himself that he showed up in your life whenever it was that day. Maybe it was when you were young. Maybe it was in your middle ages. Maybe it was in your later time of life, but maybe it's just lately you're getting renewed and started again in your faith. John the Baptist, he grew up. Isn't it amazing? If you live long enough, you see lots of kids grow up and then they have kids. It's just an amazing thing. It's just the cycle of life. But John the Baptist grew up, and the day came when he began to proclaim the things of God. Back to the stories. Meanwhile, Zacharias is muted. He's on hold. Right? I don't know if I should say what I just thought. Come on. Bear with me. You've thought it too, haven't you? I wish you should just turn off sometimes the noise, the voices of the enemy. Here's how we can do it. We just say it's enough. The enemy, get behind me. That's enough. In Jesus' name, I am his. He is mine. And I'm going to listen to what he's saying. I cannot accept the deception. I do not buy into it. 
Don't beat yourself up over things like, I'm no good. I'm a failure. It'll probably just fail anyway. A lot of negative. The enemy always produces negative. He wants to chisel away at us, chip away at us, bring you down as far as he can. But enough, enough silence. Zacharias, I have spoken. And so now he waits. And he thinks. And maybe he can write on a paper. When they were confused about his name, they thought, well, you know, John, there's no relative in your family named John. What? Are you crazy? Put it into modern terms. God is out of the box. Right? God can do anything he wants to. I'm so glad he is who he is. And in your situation, in your circumstance, God is wanting to speak to you to give you the wisdom that you need. So God comes through, point three. God comes through for Elizabeth and for Zechariah. Finally, the people were waiting, wondering, verse 21 of Luke's Gospel 1, were wondering what is going on. They're wondering if he's still alive. That's what they're wondering. They're wondering, are we going to have to go in? And finally... He come down, not able to speak, verse 22, and kept making signs to them. I don't know what he's, you know, like, maybe there was some kind of gestures. And finally, he comes when service was ended. He, he went back to his, he, he, finally when he was, his, his, he was unmuted, it took a while, but God came through. It came about when the days of his priestly service were ended that he went back home. Listen, friends. God goes with you when you go home. When you leave this place today. God is with us always when we allow him and we open our hearts to work. God is with you when you go to the workplace or to your school or to your to visit somewhere in this, in this world. God is on the other side of the world, right? He's all places. And after these days, Elizabeth, his wife, became pregnant. She kept herself in seclusion for five minutes. That's an interest. She just kind of wanted to hide out. And though this is the way the Lord has dealt with me. She's like, I can't believe this. God loves me. God has had favor upon me to take away my disgrace among men. Having children was a huge deal in that day. If you don't have kids, it was like, man, God's got it in for you. It's like they were saying, you do something wrong with you. It was just a culture thing. But God came through just like he came through for Joseph and a Mary, who are also the next story. Well, next week, we'll pick up on the Joseph and Mary story. Remember, God is a God of detail. Oftentimes, we don't know what to do, and we just, you don't know what to do, you just wait. Just station yourself and wait. Hunkered out, wait on the God until he says move. Like they were passing through the wilderness, the plow would move. Right? In the day, there were fire at night, in front and behind. God showing up again to his people. You know what, friends? God wants to show up in your situation right now. Your, with your family, with your everyone, in some way, in some form, I would say, if, I would ask you to lift your hand. If you're somewhere, kind of a crisis, somewhere, somehow, in your family, you probably lift. Somehow, there's a crisis. 
going on somewhere. You crisis, crisis, crisis. There's always a crisis. There's always people who are stressed out. That close. You're giving up. Friends, God needs to come through again. And he will. He will. He will show up. He showed up on this earth so many years ago, so many thousands of years ago. He showed up. Guess what? He's going to show up again. Until then, we walk by faith. I don't, under, I don't have all the answers. Don't, don't expect me to have all the answers. I can only say, look to God, trust God, seek God. He has the answer. He is the answer. Because he is more than enough. He has his timing and everything. Which is always perfect. Why did why did Zacharias and Elizabeth have to wait till they're long into the years? What? God sees the big picture. God had Jesus in mind. John the Baptist is going to come first and he's going to preach in the wilderness and he's going to step aside. And he did that. And it became Jesus. Because the only one that can save us is Jesus. The only one that can make us ready for heaven is Jesus. Someday he's going to show up just as he went out of this earth. He's going to come back to the earth again to take his people. Amen. Coming back for you. Everyone who believes, whosoever will believe and give himself. That's only, that's just be faithful in the little things. Be faithful in the mundane things. And be faithful, faithful, faithful. And one day, God is going to show up. And you're going to go, wow. We need those times. Take time this season to reflect on what it is why we do what we do. Why? If there's all said and done, we all go back to our home. God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit with us, working, speaking, nudging, teaching. So as we pray today, let's say, Lord, we're simple people, ordinary people, just trying to do our best while we're here on this earth, just trying to do life the best we know how, but the only way we can really do it well is to allow you to be involved. So we say, Lord Jesus, be involved. Dwell in our hearts. Come, Lord Jesus. Help us to be faithful, to love you first. Not the world, but to love you. Help us to be wise in these last days. Help us to be mindful that you always will come through for us as we wait on you, Jesus. Blessings now, I pray. Not only blessings, but a heart to hear, ears to hear, and a heart to follow and be obedient to.